and the YouTube pages, except during the joys and concerns when we will be re when we will pause the recording for your privacy. So we greet you today as you join in a wider search for truth and purpose. In this quest, may we encounter one another with open hearts and minds. May we inspire each other to consider new questions and seek deeper meaning. And may we cultivate wisdom and compassion. Let all who enter this place see a welcome face, hear a kind word, and find comfort in this community. May we all do and say here, help us be a force for positive change in the world. Please take a moment to welcome all your friends at MVUUC, greet them with a comment in the chat box, and remember that you can still reach out to them via email, phone, social media, and video chat. Physical distancing does not mean emotional distancing. So let us support one another. Please say hello in the chat box. <clears throat> Visitors, we are a diverse group with varying interests and beliefs. Our services are varied in format, tone, and topic. We encourage you to attend or view several services to gain a very good understanding of our congregation and the folks in it. If you would like to receive our weekly email newsletter, please email us at news at mvuuc.org. And that email goes to John and he'll respond and put you on the list to receive the newsletter. VUUC remains committed to supporting our members and friends to work through this time of social distancing. For that reason, we are co coordinating assistance with things like groceries, phone calls and other needs. If this sounds like something that would be helpful to you, please send an email to sac at mvuuc with your name and what kind of assistance you would like to request. Now is the time for announcements. Announcements can be set ahead, sent ahead of time to services at mvuuc.org to be read. In Zoom, you can Raise your hand by clicking on the raise hand button in the reactions tab at the bottom right of the Zoom window. We will announce your name and turn on your mic and your camera so that you can make the announcement yourself. So John, are there any announcements via email or Zoom today? Good morning. Uh, so far, I have not seen any on Zoom and None have come into the email I can check. I know there are a few things from the newsletter we wanted to share today. Um, we are gonna be staffing for the BGSU Campus Fest. Um, looks like it takes place Thursday, September 9th from 12 to 3 p.m. on the BGSU campus. And we would be talking to students, showing off our love for MVUUC and possibly hanging out uh, or handing out some swag. That's what it says here. Um, and that is another thing you can contact Social Action Committee for SAC at mvuuc.org. I believe we still have openings for the Hogwarts and the OWL, which is a comprehensive age appropriate and secular sexual education program. Those are two separate programs. Hogwarts is the camp. It'll be an overnight camp and checking out the newsletter there, you can find links to register for both of those. If you know a, a child who would like that, you can share that information with their parents. Also the Anti-Racism Book Club is meeting July 29th at 7 p.m. They'll be discussing chapters four through six of So You Want to Talk About Race by Ijeoma Oluo. And again, that's Thursday, the 29th at 7 p.m. Megan runs that, and you can contact her through sac at mvuuc.org. 
Let's see, a reminder that the garden is flourishing. If you want any vegetables there, there are some bell peppers, green beans, kale, squash it looks like. And I think those are the ones we were gonna read here. If anyone does have questions though, you can reach out. Uh, there is a board meeting today as well at 1 p.m. So if you have any questions for the board, you could always email uh, the various board members, president at mvuc.org, treasurer at mvuc.org, et cetera. And any hands raised yet? Don't see any. So I think that takes care of announcements for now. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the lighting of the chalice. And I'm going to bring this over here so it's easier. Uh, please join me in reading the words for the lighting of the chalice that can be found in the Zoom chat box. And I realize this is not how you're supposed to do it, but we're going to do it this way today anyway. Um, may this flame, symbol of transformation since time began, fire our curiosity, strengthen our wills, and sustain our courage as we seek what is good within us and around us. And I will now be doing a reading by the American astronomer Jill Cornell Tarter, A Universe of Possibilities. We live on a fragile island of life in a universe of possibilities. For many millennia, humans have been on a journey to find answers. Answers to questions about naturalism and transcendence, about who we are and why we are, and of course, who else might be out there. Is it really just us? Are we alone in this vast universe of energy and matter and chemistry and physics? Well, if we are, it's an awful waste of space. But what if we're not? What if out there others are asking and answering similar questions? What if they look up at the night sky and the same stars, but from the opposite side? Would the discovery of an older cultural civilization out there inspire us to find ways to survive our increasingly uncertain technological adolescence? Might it be the discovery of a distant civilization and our common cosmic origins that finally drives home the message of the bond among all humans. Whether we're born in San Francisco or Sudan or close to the heart of the Milky Way galaxy, we are the products of a billion year lineage of wandering stardust. We, all of us, are what happens when a primordial mixture of hydrogen and helium evolves for so long that it begins to ask where it came from. Thanks, John. So how many of you in the past few weeks or months, even the past year, have felt depressed, uh, down, tired, just blah? I know this sounds like a, a commercial a 1950s commercial for iron pills, but I think as a nation, as a community, we're all feeling sort of the same thing, very wrung out. And I'm right there with you. In these interesting times, I have been having difficulty staying and being upbeat, positive. This pandemic has been rough on all of us, that's for sure. But in addition to this virus that's going around, you sort of layer on this unrelenting information that's being shared online and in the news on terrible things like climate change and social injustice, disinformation about the pandemic, uh, disinformation about the election, and just that whole general political unrest and restlessness. It just lately feels to me like there's just been this onslaught of negativity, 
day in and day out. Recently, I've been having a lot of trouble watching the news on television or reading it online. Uh, it feels like information overload. And after really ingesting hours of this gloomy, pessimistic news, I turn off the light at night and I lay in bed and sometimes for an hour or more, I just lay there rehashing and digesting everything that I've heard that day. And basically wondering, you know, if life is even gonna exist 10 years from now. Uh, I'll confess that there are times when I just want to be unconscious. I want to be free of consciousness, of awareness of what's going on in this world, because to be conscious right now is to engage in a lot of uncomfortable thoughts and feelings. So I've been wondering, what is the remedy for this? How do you find ways, however momentary, to find and add positivity to this diet of negativity? How do we balance ourselves? I have a few ideas that I'd like to share, uh, things that have recently helped me. So the quickest remedy is the uh, turn off the news. If you're a news junkie like me, then limiting the news watching to just one or two sources for less than an hour a day. Just find out what's going on, but don't watch hours of it. Don't watch the news or don't check and check your phone online about for at least 60 minutes before you go to bed. Let the last thing that you do or ingest before you go to bed, something positive, maybe, you know, reading a, a good book uh, or listening to music or listening to a, a podcast that's funny or happy. I've removed social media from my phone, like Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, uh, with the exception of maybe which I use for work. And if I want to see Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, I have to log in my laptop in order to check it. And I usually don't have a lot of time to add yet another computer visit after my long day at work. So I've added this barrier between me and social media, which has allowed me to reduce my addiction to it. <clears throat> So let go of your news addiction, turn off the news. Second, practice gratitude. It really does work to forcefully change the focus of your thoughts from negative to positive. It's easy to think negative. It's hard to train yourself sometimes to think positively. Uh, I know it is for me but it does change the chemistry of your body. And it's easy to lose sight of what we have and what is really truly valuable when we are bombarded daily by marketing messages about how happy we would really be if we just bought one more thing or went on a trip or something like that. That's just consumerism. Um, Bottom line, really, if you have what it takes in this world to survive, a safe place to live, access to good food, utilities, access to medical care, you know, the whole Maslow ladder, um, if you have things covered, then it's okay to feel okay about your life. Your home doesn't have to look perfect, your clothes don't have to be perfect, your hair doesn't have to be perfect, nothing has to be perfect, your car can be old. Hey, if it's an old car and it gets you from point A to point B, it works. And you can be fine with that. You don't have to have a new car every year. So one, limit the news. And two, practice gratitude. <clears throat> Third, Practice self-care. 
you know the drill, you know what self-care is. Getting a good night's sleep and sticking to a schedule, taking walks, especially in green spaces like the park, drinking more water, eating smaller meals that are healthy, avoiding those greasy fried foods, doing something fun or relaxing, taking the time to smell the roses. And it is especially important if you are a caretaker of children, aging relatives, or you know somebody in your family who's ill, you really do need to take those moments to do things to balance yourself. And it's not selfish for you to do that. So again, limit the news, practice gratitude, practice self-care. And my final point is find ways to experience joy. And I find the joy of discovery works for me. So remember when you were a kid <clears throat> and the world was your oyster? Everything was fascinating. And you don't have to lose that as you get older. I remember as a kid watching those, the ants move in and out of the little sand mounds in the cracks in the sidewalk. And I was just fascinated by all of the activity that was going on there, watching clouds in the sky morph from one animal or cartoon into another animal, making up stories about them, or even climbing a tree and seeing how far you can see. Uh, when I was a kid, we just saw the petrified forest on television the other night with Humphrey Bogart. I remember going to the petrified forest and having one of my parents hand me this chunk of rock and telling me, this chunk of rock used to be a tree. And my little kid mind was just like, how does a tree become a rock? It doesn't matter that you're an adult now. It doesn't matter how old you are. The world is still just as fascinating and it is there for your explanation, exploration. Just after the pandemic began in the spring of 2020, my husband and I were housebound like the rest of the world. We were very nervous and worried about what was about to happen to us, what was gonna happen in the world. And at this time, you had to wear a mask even to walk down the street to the mailbox in the apartment complex. And those few moments outside of the apartment during the beginning of this pandemic just felt like dangerous and delicious, like you were doing something really wrong. But one day as I began to walk out to the mailbox, Rick followed me out the front door to ask me a question. And as we stood talking on this little walkway outside of our front door, Rick happened to look down and he said, what is that? And that was this little swirl of grass and leaves and fuzz that was at the base of, of a little bush. And around this little bush is this rock garden. So it's all rocky. <clears throat> well, I gently moved the mass to one side and we discovered beneath this mass, uh, little pink babies that were squealing. Their eyes were shut and their little arms and legs were flailing in the cold air. We didn't know what they were, but I covered them up quickly. They looked either like baby squirrels or they looked like baby rabbits. And it was gonna take a few weeks for, for us to be able to tell the difference. But during this terrible time, every morning I would venture out the front door to check on this little nest of pink babies to watch them grow. They grew fur, their eyes opened, and I, I just couldn't help myself. Every once in a while, I would reach out and stroke their little soft fur. And when their ears grew long and slender, we knew then that they were baby bunnies. And eventually these baby rabbits began to venture away from the nest 
little for short periods of time. They hid under nearby bushes and huddled against the front door of our neighbor and those and every morning, despite the terrible virus that was raging in the world, despite the lack of supplies at the grocery store, despite my fears that my family would catch COVID and die alone in the hospital, my first thought of the day was baby bunnies. They were a blessed discovery that distracted me from the horror of what was going on around me. And I believe that sent these bunnies to me as a reminder that life continues no matter what. And since then I have been on an active hunt for new discoveries, some simple and some complex. Most brought me joy, a few brought me pain, which is okay too because pain brings growth. For me, travel brings the joy of discovery and I, I don't have to go far. I, I love exploring local towns and finding really good restaurants and breweries or wineries. For example, La Rose in Grand Rapids offers a flight of really good soup. That was just an amazing discovery. Uh, books also bring the joy of discovery for me. I love finding a new author whose writing I like and then reading through their collection of books. Uh, recently, I discovered the author Tana French and her series of Irish murder mysteries. Very good writer. TV also bring the joy of discovery. Lately, I've gotten hooked on an HBO show called In Treatment, which is about a psychiatrist and his conversations with his patients. I went back to the beginning of the series <clears throat> and found that there were episodes devoted to uh, one patient in particular that was really helpful to me personally. I learned a lot about myself through this character on TV and the storyline actually helped me to resolve an old trauma in my life. So it was a joy to discover this television show and find relief from this trauma. So to recap my recipe for offsetting the negativity of the world, limit the news, practice gratitude, practice self-care, and experience joy through discovery. Henri Nguyen once said, Joy does not simply happen to us. We have to choose joy and keep choosing it every day. May you find peace and joy. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. When we think of the fourth principle, a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. We often think that this means pouring over philosophy books or learning about other religions, but sometimes the meaning can just be bunnies, or rather realizing that being fully present in the moment and appreciating the unexpected joys in life can help us further that search for truth and meaning. The author Terry Pratchett wrote the following line in one of his books. It's still magic, even if you know how it works. That line often pops into my head when I'm walking down the street and I see a thistle plant growing out of a seemingly impossible crack in the ground, or a squirrel jumping ridiculously long from a tree onto a rooftop. And thinking about those experiences, I have to ask myself, would a search for truth and meaning even be responsible if it focused solely on the theoretical, the supernatural, and the esoteric? If we completely overlooked the beauty, complexity, or unexpectedness that our world presents to us every day. It's important that we search for truth and meaning in the wise words of people long dead, and that we compare religions to figure out common themes and beliefs that have been used by people for centuries to make sense of our existence. However, 
limiting ourselves only to the words and thoughts of our ancestors or pondering what an afterlife might hold in store would seem to me to limit the freedom and scope of our search. And it might even be considered irresponsible for us to ignore the things going on around us in our present environment. After all, as the famous Buddhist monk uh, Thich Nhat Hanh said, no one has ever lived in the past or the future, only the now. Life is available only in the present. Thank you, John. Now, more than ever, we are counting on your pledge payments and donations to help sustain and strengthen this congregation. So that is so important to all of us. Supporting our efforts to be a community of love truth, justice, and service. Please click on the link in the chat box or scan the QR code and be sure to select the correct designation on the drop-down box when you donate. Thank you. Hi, this is number 361. Enter, rejoice, and come in. That's awesome. Thank you. That was uh, Heather Goldman on piano. Thank you for uh, taping that for us. So our music today is a song by Don Bessig called Flying Free, and it is sung by Ruth DeBrock. The words are in the chat box. Is a place I call my own. 
Well, that was amazing. Uh, thank you, Ruth. And I am, <clears throat> as Lisa said, I'm so glad that Ruth and Lynn uh, and Heather have uh, recorded music for us to use in the service. It just makes the service so much more. <clears throat> now is the time, excuse me. <clears throat> now is the time for the sharing of joys, concerns, and milestones. John, please pause the recording at this time. <clears throat> So our next uh, item up is um, a musical interlude. And this is going to feature our Lynn Israel singing the uh, song, My Favorite Things from the Sound of Music. And of course the words will be in the chat box as she sings. And I don't know if it's St Steve Israel or Lynn Israel uh, with the name on the box. Oh, there's Lynn. There we go. There she is. <laughs> Hi, Lynn. Hi there. Thank you for agreeing to sing today. I really appreciate it because it would have been me. And it would not have been melodious at all. Uh, well, this song it fits in so perfectly with what you talked about because it's all of her favorite things, the things that give her joy. So uh, here we go. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens, bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages tied up with strings, these are a few of my favorite things. Cream colored ponies and crisp apple strudels, doorbells and sleigh bells and schnitzel with noodles, wild geese that fly with the moon on their wings. These are a few of my favorite things. Girls in white dresses with blue satin sashes, snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes, silver white winters that melt into springs. These are a few of my favorite things. When the dog bites, when the bee stings, when I'm feeling sad. I simply remember my favorite things and then I don't feel so bad. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> oh, that was wonderful, Lynn. Thank you so much. <laughs> and she did that at the last, uh, and she did that at the last minute. So I really appreciate that. So our closing words today are uh, going to be with me and John. So John, you'll need to share the um, spotlight. There we are. There we are. Okay. And the closing words are from UU Community Minister Reverend John Gibb Millspaugh. All too often, we paste the geometries of our walled gardens. Believing we are transversing the whole of creation. With spirits of discovery, let us uncover the mysteries nested in our routines. With the eagerness of children, let us uncover the mysteries nested in, uh, let us seek out the secrets unfolding in our peripheral vision. Let us behold each fellow creature with reverence. Let us greet each day with praise and thanksgiving. For life is a gift of incomprehensible magnitude. Our lives are voyages with unknowable destinations. Along the way, let us meet, embrace, challenge, and support one another. Let us fashion a network of mutuality and extend it into the larger world. 
In these ways, we forge lives of goodness and beauty. In these ways, we know the life of prayer. So please join me in reading the words for extinguishing our chalice, which can be found in the Zoom, in the Zoom chat box. As we extinguish this chalice, let us remember to keep the fire of curiosity and discovery burning in our hearts and share the light with the world. So our closing song for today, or after our closing song, we will invite people, everyone in person to stay for the coffee hour. Uh, for our friends attending via Zoom, you are welcome to stay and chat with your fellow MVUUC members. Your mics and cameras will be turned on once the service ends. Our closing song is Go With a Song in Your Heart, sung by Lynn Israel and you can find the words in the Zoom chat box. Go with the song in your arms. Go with music in your soul. Leave with the memory of a melody. Go with the song in your heart. Give us a moment to turn on your uh, cameras and your microphones and let's have a moment together. Hey, Charlie. Hi there. And Jack. Hi, John. I don't know if this is appropriate at this time, but I uh, wonder if anyone knows someone who does weeding. I pay $25 an hour. Wow. And I'm in Perry. That's a going rate, I've learned. And it's in Perrysburg. And I don't supervise much. I just would point out if, if you were.